Welcome back everyone for our last webinar of this EREC. I'm really happy to have you all back with me right now and to introduce to you our last two speakers uh, from AMCS Group, Eamon Hines, their CTO, and John O'Brien, their Cloud Solution Architect from Microsoft. So I'm really eager to tell you what they have prepared. They are going to talk a lot about cybersecurity and they call it 2021 needs to be the year for cybersecurity. So have fun and let's go. I'm really eager to see what they can tell us all about. I expect um, the audience here, you know, um, you're probably on teams that support your management and your board on decisions regarding security and other IT, um, uh, I suppose, challenges. And you understand there are significant threats out there. I, I don't really need to, uh, you know, say that from, from scratch, but I'll just talk a little bit about what we have found and what we know. Um, so, you know, that a data leak or an intrusion of some sort can, can be difficult to recover from and the cost to defend it is often a lot less than the cost of the damage it can do. Um, we know about the security sto breach stories across the industry, uh, reputational damage, and you know increasingly what we're seeing, and, and there are some examples in the last quarter, where infrastructure and utility companies have become targets of hackers. Um, actually, I know personally in the last quarter, some companies that we interact with, have had on-premise systems hacked for ransomware. And, you know, some have paid, some have not, but it is a, it's a very difficult situation. Uh, a question that often comes up, and, and some of our customers um, are with us, as I say, for, you know, nearly two decades. And there is a belief that the on-premise security can be managed a lot better. And, and I understand that position where somebody can put a VPN and, and you know, really manage the edge or try to manage the edge. Um, I want to have a discussion with you about that today and a discussion that I believe should make a definitive case for SaaS solutions with competent partners being the direction of travel that is going to protect you more. Um, we'll get lots of other information as we go through and a lot of detail uh, from Microsoft themselves about what they see in the world. But if I were to sum up the argument at, you know, at the start and then give you the detail, what I would say you know, a single company and their IT team have visibility and experience of the threats that are in the marketplace and they're exposed to, they're aware of, and they use their edge protection to, to, to stop this. Um, however, I, I can tell you it doesn't typically match, you know, the emerging threats or new attack systems or new strategies until it's too late. Um, in partnership with Microsoft, we believe we can aggregate that kind of experience coming from thousands of large enterprise customers and other you know ecosystems and, and Mark John will talk about it um, and really put uh, I, I call it a, a preemptive defense solution together um, and, and that's really you know where that's the theme here that the threats are out there there is a view maybe I'd be more secure protected in my bubble but the reality is you know I don't believe so and, and if we go to the next slide, I'll just talk a little bit more about that. Um, so I suppose the nature of work and business has been changing over the last decade. I think, you know, obviously accelerated a lot in the last 12 months for, for a variety of reasons dominated by the pandemic. But, you know, we need the, the acceleration of digital transformation, worker productivity, changing customer expectations and, and rapidly changing customer environments in our industry as we saw the you know the waste load in different markets shift from the small business to domestic when you know the small business closed and then back again and then maybe over again that kind of um, movement and change our industry is you know it's, it's quite uh, disruptive and the technology and the way people work and the landscape has changed rapidly as well. And effectively, every company is now a technology company or at least dependent on technology. 
um, to provide service to the customers and their employees. And you, particularly in the security teams, are charged with, in this ever-growing and changing digital environment, in protecting the edge and protecting, you know, um, your business so that you, you know your business can succeed at its at its own core skills um and i suppose you have to do more with less as budgets you know are are ever shrinking and and you know maybe rightly so but it it gets tougher to do more with less so that traditional view of the hardened perimeter with all the solutions inside i, I you know i don't feel it's a valid option or ver for very few um and the cost and number of breaches increasing every year, as I said, I have, you know, we, we know of customers in trouble in the last quarter, let alone the last year. And government and then the regulations are, are piling on top of that to try and, you know, help people and, and drive the IT standards, the IT security standards. But again, that's a burden on the IT teams then to deliver to those standards. So that combination of um, <laughs> pressures, and change and to move towards a more connected uh, infrastructure really has created security pressures on our IT teams. And, and if we go on to the next slide, then it, I try to, you know, it, we try and describe maybe what, um, I suppose, what that ecosystem is starting to look like. Um, the environment services industry, you know, we have our critical ERP system at the center managing, you know, the, the charging, the invoicing, the billing, the operations. And we have vehicles equipped with mobile devices, sensors, interfaces with scale houses, way bridges, um, employees working from home, subcontractors interfacing with our system. Those nodes increasingly have to be present, you know, as endpoints out on the web. And it is... Uh, scary fascinating to look at the number of attacks that happen on those endpoints every day as we monitor with our security tools and every time you add a node there's extra risk extra vulnerability and the systems and devices need continued updating and patching so as that landscape of interconnectedness grows um you know our dependency on the technology grows automating the processes um you know into all sorts of integrations so Basically, the security model that we want to talk about today, where the, your solution is running as a SaaS solution in a secure cloud environment, I believe is the reality of the world where you know, we need to get to if we're not there already. Um, if, so we talk about the next slide then. So what am I saying? Cloud and SaaS, right? Well. <laughs> We all need systems that recognize and block attacks before they happen. Um, AMCS, we've chosen Microsoft Azure because as you know, there are probably three big players out there on cloud providers. In terms of enterprise, the Microsoft business and enterprise solution is the de facto standard um, for enterprise class applications and workloads. Um, you'll hear more detail later on how much Microsoft is investing and the focus on security, but I'll summarize it by saying the investment and sophisticated learning that is happening every moment of every day that feeds back into the defense systems, um, it's unparalleled. For Frankly, it's unparalleled. Um, so as anyone who has invested in security tools knows in, in their own IT infrastructure, you know, the endless lists of alerts from multi, all sorts of security point products make it very difficult for your defenders to effectively set alarms, triggers, understand what to react to, what not, you know, warnings, alerts, you know, critical issues. So it's a very fast moving environment. And, and this is what the consolidation of an AMCS SaaS solution on a Microsoft Azure security platform is able to deliver to you without you having to, you know, I suppose, invest your IT team's time and effort in that. So I guess, what does it do for you? Um, it reduces your capital expenditure. You know, the SaaS solution platform 
it frees you from that upfront expense and we manage those threats and attacks in a real-time way based on the knowledge that's coming in worldwide to us and allows us to be very preemptive in our protection. Um, I should mention the business continuity side of it as well. You know, um, you all know the impact of an outage. I don't need to tell you. But with the platform on Azure, we've got triple nine guarantees to you up time all the time, 24-7. Um, we have alerting, monitoring, geo-replication, and basically business continuity guarantee. Um, and you know that that is the continuity guarantee that allows you to be, you know, I talked about cybersecurity as the threat detection and protection, but also the inherent business continuity guarantee that the Azure platform gives you. So the scarce IT resources that you have and the, the, the downward pressure on budget and the upward pressure on activity, then you can use your IT team to do what they need to do for your business. Um, you know, and, and I suppose that's that's the key uh, upside here. So I suppose then, if I talk to this slide here, what we recognize, and you know, everyone recognizes that security is is dependent on all the links in the chain. You know, because an attack, one point of attack and ingress, you know, is I suppose weakens the whole system. And we recognize that security is a partnership between the MCS SaaS solution and the Azure ecosystem. So, you know, during the application design, independent of, of the Azure platform, during the application design, we incorporate the regulations and the requirements, you know, you see GDPR there, for those of you that are familiar with it, our PCI compliance, we incorporate those into software development cycle. We have specialist in-house security team that is, you know, uh, dedicated to security outside of feature function. Each feature function and epic that we develop are reviewed against the security implications, the threats, and the countermeasures. Um, and then, you know, we develop that within our development teams. We develop the feature functionality with the architecture of security in mind. In addition, we use a third party. Um, BSI, you may know them. There, there's the little logo there at the bottom of that slide. They're accredited across the crest and, you know, a variety of security accreditations. And independent of AMCS or Microsoft, we get them to attack us. So we're paying our own hackers, you know, uh, uh, what would I call it? reputable company, needless to say, to constantly review and attack and determine the security of our system of our ecosystem and you know in advance of discovering it the wrong way make sure that you know we're well protected and and that is you know that is part of what we've got to do because as i said the application plus the ecosystem create the security um as a company we're driving, you know, we have the accreditations, our application in the ecosystem, SOC 1 and SOC 2 this year, actually. So I, I know SOC 2 isn't on that, but we're getting accredited for SOC 2, including security this year, which any of our US, um, any of our US listeners may, you know, be well aware of that, that level. That's a very high level of um, security accreditation. Um, and we continue invest to invest in cybersecurity personnel in-house and in harnessing the features of the Azure tooling and infrastructure. So if we go on to the next slide there, um, I want to talk a little bit then. So so that that what I've talked to up to now is is more about AMCS's view and you know the, the ecosystem and our responsibility to the marketplace. Um, we have a a deep and rich partnership with Microsoft. Um, so we're both a, a customer partner and a managed solution provider partner. So it's it's a deep relationship and it represents a strategic partnership that drives innovation, thought leadership across our complete offering and allows us to bring the best of the best experts from Microsoft to the MCS table in terms of both designing and delivering our solutions. Um, so, 
you know, John mentioned the team of solution architects he's, as, that he's part of, their fast track development engineers and investment programs to allow us to drive this forward. So, you know, all in all, this partnership is, is I, I suppose, deep and deeply embedded in our go forward position. So if we go on to the next one. Um, and on that, so I suppose on that note, I'd like to introduce John back to you now to discuss the Microsoft experience. So hopefully what we've, what we've talked about now is AMCS's commitment to this industry, our awareness um, of the problems created by cybersecurity, the solutions provided by an enterprise class SaaS application architected within a secure framework as, as provided by Microsoft. And then I, I'll pass over to John now and let him talk to you a little bit about the specifics that of that ecosystem that we are exploiting for your security. Uh, many thanks, Simon. And yes, yeah, so uh, I thought we we might just start um, this section of the presentation with just maybe a reiteration of, of some of the things that Eamon mentioned, but also to shine a light on an area that Microsoft is increasingly seeing through our research um, and through various research um, organizations that we deal with. Um, what we're seeing with the nature of security threats, attacks that are occurring against um, commercial, governmental agencies, um, all, all walks of life effectively, um, anyone with internet presence. Um, what we're seeing increasingly is the, what's called the commoditization of your valuable data, the you know, IP that you control, the information um, that you have um, as a business, that you store as a business, whether that's for um, your own organization or customers um, that you're storing data uh, on behalf of. What we're seeing is attackers are increasingly um, hiring out both their services, um, their toolkits um, that they allow, um, you know, sometimes relatively low skilled attackers can actually utilize very compl complicated ransomware or malware kits. Um, we see increasingly, the, as you can see, the price of compromised compromise PCs and devices is, is relatively low, considering the you know, both reputational and, and certainly the, uh, the, the, the damage it could do to your, to your business or to, to your various different agencies. And the, the relative low price of compromising a PC is, 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 is quite, a, quite a sobering thing to see. And we also see things like stolen passwords, um, and even denial of service attacks. Again, the relative uh, cheapness of this, um, of, of this, uh, these types of attacks is, 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 is again a quite a sobering thing for a lot of customers to see. But these are average prices um, that we've seen, and it's stayed relatively, relatively around these prices for the, you know, around these averages for the last um, few years. So um, Microsoft is, I suppose this this slide is really to emphasise why Microsoft is effectively spending $1 billion per year on security and a huge amount of that um, investment is going into our Azure platform, um, which is um, focusing in on three main pillars um, for, for our customers. We look at our spending on our operations and how we do business and how we operate our cloud platforms. Um, Eamon mentioned it earlier on, but the partnerships that we have with both our customers and strategic alliances across uh, security vendors. And then obviously the technology that we're providing uh, to both uh, par partners and customers and the technology that we're utilizing to, to run um, our own operational environments. Um, so a huge amount of investment, um, but really warranted considering um, you know, the, the, the nature of the attacks that are, that are available and the relative uh, cheapness that uh, attackers are placing upon your valuable data and information. So, if we just go to the next slide, what I'll, what I'll do is I'll just talk um, about our operational security uh, in terms of what we're implementing. Um, so Azure is a hyperscale um, cloud environment. Um, we have over 100 data centers across the planet. Um, we're still leading the pack in terms of the major cloud providers, certainly the hyperscale providers. 
um, we're, we're way ahead in terms of our data center um, investments, although the other cloud providers are certainly investing in this area. Um, but it represents a, a massive investment um, by Microsoft. Um, we have thousands upon thousands of customers who are running their critical um, systems on our platforms. And of course, this warrants um, you know, the highest operational excellence from Microsoft. So we have our physical data centers, which have multi-layered protection. Um, one example I would give when we're talking about um, that operational excellence as applied to our data centers is that anybody who works in these data centers, um, they have to go through multiple, phys multiple physical layers of security. They have to provide multiple types of identification. They're scanned and they have biometrics that are applied. We scan um, people even for you know pieces of metal in their pockets, um, all the way down to um, the you know the the access um, into those data centers. It's, it's very fine grained in terms of physical access. Um, and even then, when you get into a data center, you have what we call uh, just-in-time access to systems. So for anybody working in these data centers, they have a window of opportunity to do the work. Um, there's no standing privilege. So there is no, you know, global administrator or master account that anybody accesses when they're working in our data centers. There's a limited privilege access that these um, individuals will have for that period of time. If you don't get the work done in that period of time, your access is revoked. Um, so along with that, then we have our monitoring, our, you know, obviously the restricted access I spoke to, but our 24 by 7 monitoring um, in uh, multiple SOC centers. Um, monitoring uh, our Azure data centers on, on a global level. Um, we also have backup um, monitoring environments um, for every data center region across the world. And uh, in terms of global security, in terms of the, in, in terms of actually Eamon uh, mentioned it earlier on um, with ESI, we actually have our own internal teams as well. Um, we have what's called the red and the blue team. And effectively, these are um, security experts. And the red team is effectively tasked with running uh, penetration tests, uh, attacks, um, malware attacks, ransomware attacks, all sorts of um, attacks against our own Azure infrastructure. And then the blue team are analyzing and responding to those threats. So there's very, an element of uh, gamesmanship going on between these two teams um, constantly. And any of the learnings that we, we get from um, any of the successful red team attacks go straight into um, revising and reviewing our operational um, security um, elements. Um, okay, and then as well, the data centers that we're running, those hyperscale data centers, we're not running normal hardware in those environments. We're running customized specific to our specifications. We're running specific hardware in those environments. We're running even down to the level of routers and, and switches and firewalls. They're all custom built for Azure and to our various specifications um, and with security being one of the major elements of, of the design for those, for those um, pieces of equipment. Um, so if you just go to the next slide, please. So that was operational excellence. So if we're talking now about our partnerships, um, again, as, as Eamon mentioned, just to kind of roll in behind that, we do work very closely with our customers. Um, Eamon mentioned that I'm one of you know, several different cloud solutions architects uh, working within Western Europe. And um, we have a large team um, that are dedicated to our customers. Um, we also have, so I focus in on what's called the apps and infrastructure workloads, um, which represents about 60 services within Azure across networking, application developments, um, and security being one of the major concerns. I also have a colleague who works within the data and AI space who's dedicated again um, to AMCS for any workloads that, you know, relational da databases, non-relational databases, IoT sensors, AI, ML, all of that sort of stuff. And obviously has a, has a major focusing on the security aspects of those, of those workloads. We have our engineering teams who work very closely with our customers on build out. So on low level design work and um, on best practices, um, on how to implement our services correctly. Um, so there's a whole team of people. There's um, also our product groups who are very hands-on, who are uh, always looking for feedback from customers like AMCS, who are you know, pushing our platform. 
and, and really, you know, drilling us for questions in terms of, you know, what's the best way to do things. And they love that type of feedback and they, they engage uh, very closely uh, with our customers. Um, but on top of that, we also work with the industry. So Microsoft, our history in the enterprise space, um, we have made, you know, major partnerships and alliances with a variety of uh, security vendors. And you, I'll top a slide now and you'll see some of the names. Um, but on top of that as well, we also have a, a pedigree with government. So we do operate a number of government Azure data center regions within the US. And we also have a number of sovereign Azure uh, cloud environments that we operate for customers and regions in particular that need sovereign, uh, that have sovereign data requirements or very specific compliancy requirements. And you can imagine that the operating within those environments, highly secured, you know, a quite often classified information is involved here. And we take all of those learnings and that's applied to the Azure global environment um, as a given. So if you just go to the next slide, please, just to give you a, a view on our Microsoft Intelligent Security Alliance or association. Um, the, and this is the alliance I mentioned earlier on, where we are actively working with, you know, you recognize many of these names here, um, F5, Checkpoint, um, Barracuda, some very well-known um, security vendors. And we work very closely with these customers um, in terms of how they're building their products, because many of these um, vendors are providing Azure marketplace items, which are solutions that you can actually procure from the Azure marketplace. Um, but also we connect a lot of our services with these customers. So one example I would use is we have a, an Azure service um, that just came on um, general availability last year, which is called Azure Sentinel. And Sentinel is a security incident and event management system. And we have a multitude of connectors that allow us to collate all the information from your firewalls, from your monitoring systems, um, from a variety of different hardware vectors, bring them into this theme system um, and give you one payment last to actually surface up the attacks and threats that are occurring across your entire state. And that's just one example of one service within Azure that has really benefited from this you know, intelligent security association. Uh, it's not the only one, there's, there's many different um, services that we have built um, in tandem with you know, advice and sharing information with, with these partners. Um, next slide, please. So, yeah, as, as I mentioned, we 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 understand the the major shift for a lot of our customers. You know, taking what you've done, what you've established, your established practices on premise, and moving them to the cloud. We don't underemphasize the difficulty and the journey that you're going to have to under, undertake. But at the same time, we have thousands of success stories with customers. We work very closely, as I mentioned, with all of our customers uh, to, to get you to you know, the, a confident and secure state within Azure. And we do this through many of the things I mentioned, you know, our technology platforms, our alliances, our teams that work directly with customers. Um, but we also are consistently and constantly publishing our best practices on Azure our benchmarks, uh, and I think at the end of the, at the, end of the, the webinar, there's actually gonna be a link um, that you can avail of if you would like to take one of our security benchmark assessments, just to have a look at your environment as is, and you know, some of the things you may want to think about when looking to a cloud operating environment. And we also publish our architecture frameworks, which are very lengthy um, architecture frameworks that customers can implement again like amcs can implement to do the best practices this is quite a, quite often the space that i work in which is talking customers through the best way to implement services the best services to utilize on azure um, and one of the major areas that we have in in that um both the Catherine and the well architected framework is of course the security pillar it's one of the one of the biggest areas that we focus in on so technology um, and just to give you a maybe a sample of some of the services that we have built into Azure, um, these are native controls that 
any customer who's implementing Azure um, can implement, and AMCFs have implemented uh, many of these uh, controls. Uh, so identity and access. So anything that we do within the Azure environments, anything our customers do within the Azure environments, um, utilize our systems called role-based access control. And effectively, it's a fine-grained uh, identity and access privilege management system, which essentially says that anything that you deploy within our cloud platforms, you need to have privilege to do, which is a fairly very standard, very simple thing. But what we're utilizing for our identity and access systems is something that a lot of customers are quite familiar with, which is our direct Active Directory and our Azure AD environments. So you can take your on-premise environments if you've built up, if you've you know, if you've actually invested a lot of time in creating security groupings and, and all the like, you can take your existing identities, bring them to Azure AD, and then use Azure AD to apply role-based access controls within Azure. And um, that's just one sample um, of the, I guess, taking something that you've already invested time in and uh, bringing it in, into Azure and applying the same strict rule sets um, to anything that's developed in Azure. Um, from an absolute data perspective, um, again, I, I know AMCS are implementing this heavily, and uh, things like uh, our Key Vault service, which is a secure area for securing our uh, secrets, um, any systems that um, are, can be accessed within those environments. You store the secrets within a, a key vault, and um, things like certificates, encryption keys, et cetera, are all securely stored. And the big thing about that is you can report on any access to it. So what systems have actually accessed um, these keys um, and those policies and fine-grained controls in there. Network security, we, we built in things like network security groups, which minimize protocol uh, communication between um, various different systems, any virtual machines that you deploy, you can, again, fine grain control of the communication ports to segregate your systems. From a threat protection and security management perspective, we have a number of different tool sets like Security Center, which allow uh, customers like AMCS to get what's called a secure score against their Azure environment. And again, I know that AMCS are, are, are doing this um, on a regular basis, looking at the signals that we're sending into that system um, and evaluating the, you know, the, the potential risks of certain uh, standards that they're applying within their Azure environments. So that's just a very, very quick sampling of some of the, you know, we could, we could talk a whole hour on, 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 on this technology area, but I wanted to finish with a, just a very quick word on, I suppose what, what I would consider, you know, one of the biggest um, plus points for Microsoft, just in general, um, as a as a software provider, from a security perspective, um, what we have is, I'm sure you're familiar with, Microsoft has a multitude of clouds, right? We don't just run Azure, we run Microsoft 365, we run um, xCloud services for Xbox, we have our commercial and our consumer elements. And what's happening there is we have literally, I know the numbers are huge here, but we literally have trillions of signals that have been generated on a daily basis from these environments. Um, we have billions of predictions that have been generated by our machine learning and AI systems. And coming out of that, out of this secure graph, as we call it, is millions of actions based on threats that we are seeing in the wild all the time. And I think this is, this is the key thing. We are feeding into our products into the security systems that AMCS are able to utilize. We're feeding, feeding in all of that data and information, and that's going directly into our products. It's been surfaced in things like Security Center and in terms of our recommendations to customers. And that footprint in terms of being able to scan those signals and information, I think is a, is a key factor in our capability when it comes to secure, securing uh, customer environments. So in summary, key takeaways then, you know, as, as we've understood through this presentation today, the opportunity is now to take action, right? The threat is real in our industry and, and obviously associated industries. Um, obviously, the, the action here is to take that action around cybersecurity, awareness and readiness. Make sure that everyone is thinking and building a cybersecurity plan and leveraging the, the available security services across the cloud 
through our strategic partnership in AMCS with Microsoft and how AMCS has always committed itself to providing you with the most secure environments. Our partnership with Microsoft is essential, as I said, to help us stay ahead of the attackers. And we can help. So there's a link there to contact AMCS. And we want to hear from you. We want to engage with you. We want to understand your needs and concerns and how we can provide solutions for that. And there's always additional resources available. Um, and Microsoft, as John alluded to there, and there's a link um, to the Cloud Adoption Framework Governance Benchmark Tool. And, and that can help support you and manage how you think about your cybersecurity readiness and where you are right now. Um, for us, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you all today. Um, it's really great to get the engagement and participation, and we look forward to engaging with you further and talking to you all soon. So thanks again. Thank you. Well, thanks to John and Eamon for that lovely presentation. And thanks to all of you for attending this EREC. Uh, it was really a lot of fun to us. We had a lot of great talks with all of you. And yes, I would really love to have you back for the next EREC in October from 4th to the 9th of October this year, 2021. And yeah, we will definitely be back with more webinars, more booths, um, more, more people as well. And yes, this is it. I wish you a very nice evening or a very nice weekend. Please head over to the booth of AMCS as well to the other booths of the other exhibitors. And you can, of course, watch all the recordings of the webinars as well. They will be available uh, for a short time. So if you missed any, you can, of course, have another look at those. And yes, with that, I say goodbye and see you soon.